While we all sit back and watch the world seemingly burn down around us, I am reminded of other stories in the news cycle that are so absurd, it makes me think that we must be living in some kind of simulation. That's right. It's not just some video game or simulation about civil war and global strife, perhaps also a sitcom. Maybe, maybe in the future, people create an AI system to make comedy shows as well. Because this story, my friends, is so insane that it has to be a joke. Clown world, as it was. Twitter hires a law firm to prepare to sue Elon Musk over scrap deal. Okay. Okay. So it starts out with Elon Musk upset the Babylon Bee got suspended. The Babylon Bee is the conservative Christian satire website. And so he says, I might have to buy Twitter. Everyone then laughs and says, Elon Musk, you're not going to be able to buy Twitter. Twitter refuses this. Everyone's saying, no, Twitter's like, we're not going to sell. We don't want to do this. But everyone's like, dude, it would be a violation of your fiduciary duties if you do not accept. Then Elon Musk comes out on 420 and offers, what, what did he offer? 5420 or something like that? 5420? 420, 420 oh, we get it. Twitter agrees and everyone's like, go, oh, Twitter agrees. Well, Elon's buying Twitter. Then Elon stops trying to secure fi- financing over the bot problem. And then Twitter says, no, no, you can't back out. We gave you what you needed. Now, Elon is saying he's terminating the deal with a letter to the SEC. And now Twitter wants to sue Elon to force him to buy the platform. OK, this is real life. Just goes to show you for all my younger listeners out there. Adults really don't have any idea what they're doing most of the time. Now, the question is, with Elon Musk's tweet about this, he has a couple. Is this 4D chess or is it a cope? Elon tweets this meme. It says, they said I couldn't buy Twitter. And he's smiling. They, then they wouldn't disclose bot info. And he's laughing. Now they want to force me to buy Twitter in court. Now they will have to disclose bot info in court. This is just the most ridiculous story. I, 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 is, is Elon Musk really playing 4D chess or is he just coping with the fact that he agreed to buy a platform that is worth trash for a very high price and Twitter was probably laughing behind the scenes? I honestly don't know. We got so much to break down. But here's an image that he posted. He posted uh, Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris playing chess with a single pawn against a full board, and he writes checkmate. Is this his 4D chess move? Okay. You, oh, I'm sorry. He wrote checkmate. <laughs> it's even crazier than I thought. All right. Let me read you the news and then break down all of the wondrous possible scenarios as to what may be happening. The Hill reports, Twitter has hired a large New York-based law firm as it prepares to sue Tesla and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk after he scrapped a deal to purchase the social media company last week. Bloomberg reported on Sunday that Watchtel, Lipton, Rosen, and Katz is representing Twitter after Musk on Friday dumped a deal to purchase the company for $44 billion. Twitter will file its lawsuit in Delaware next week, according to Bloomberg, which cited people familiar with the matter. Musk is being represented by the law firm Quinn Emanuel Urquhart, Urquhart and Sullivan. The Hill has reached out to Twitter as well as both law, fir- law firms for comment. Musk, who bought up a roughly 9% stake in Twitter before moving to purchase the company earlier this year, abandoned the deal ostensibly because the company officials failed to provide accurate and comprehensive information on fake or spam accounts. After news of the deal was reported, Twitter shares fell 5% while Tesla shares climbed more than 2%. Twitter board chair Brett Taylor said the company would take Musk to court in order to force the completion of the sale. Musk, with his more than 100 million followers, initially expressed excitement about championing free speech on the platform when news of his takeover bid first emerged. But he quickly pivoted to raising concern over how many bots are on the platform. But if his motives, but his motives have been called into question by some experts who have pointed out the prolifer- pro- proliferation of spam accounts on Twitter have been public knowledge for years, well before his takeover bid. That's an important point that doesn't question Elon, but actually lends to what he may be doing with 40 chess. Twitter also said it provided detailed information to Musk on the bots, removes around a million spam accounts a day, and insists that number of active bot accounts on the platform remains below 5%. 
In Delaware, the corporate home for many public companies, Chancery Court often rules on mergers and other business disputes without a jury. All right, there is so much to break down. Let's go in reverse order. It's easier to track that way. His motives called into question, who, have, who by experts who have mentioned, bot and spam accounts, it's public knowledge. Yes. Elon Musk saw the bots. Why? There are bots that imitate Elon Musk and try to perform like crypto scams. It's possible that Elon, knowing this, just outright was like, I'm sick of this and I want to expose it because Twitter isn't dealing with it. So here you go. He announces, OK, we'll uh, we'll buy the company. And then what happens? The day after, the day after Elon Musk announces this, a ma- uh, uh, the, the bio is announced, a mass wave of leftist accounts lose followers and right wing accounts gain followers. That makes no sense. And we also heard reports from many people saying they were unbanned. Something strange was happening. I think part of Elon Musk's motivation was exposing the bots, which is quite literally what he's tweeting. Now they will have to disclose bot info in court. What if Elon knows that Twitter is one big psyop? And I got to be honest. I have 1.36 million followers on Twitter. I don't have people walking up to me going like, oh, dude, I'm, I'm a big fan of your Twitter. That doesn't happen. I have people who come to me saying, yo, I watch Timcast IRL. And I'll tell you what else is very strange. I, I got to be honest. I do think viewership numbers probably fake across the board. Like CNN getting millions of views. I don't believe it. Maybe. I mean, maybe. I don't have any evidence to suggest otherwise. But I will say it's strange to me that Cast Castle, for instance, youtube.com slash Cast Castle. Check it out. We get like 10 to 20,000 views per episode. You know, the average is going up a little bit as we're starting to streamline this. And for some reason, random people on the streets know the jokes from the show. And so I'm wondering, do they want to make it seem like not that many people watch it and the view counts low? We've seen this before. There have been instances where I put out a video where it just doesn't get any views. But are they faking it or not? I don't, I don't know. I'm not saying I believe this to be true. I'm just saying, you know, I, I, should, re, I should clarify to say, I don't, I'm not saying I know it's true. I'm just saying it is very strange to me that we can make a Cast Castle vlog. It gets 10,000 views. And then someone who we had on passively, randomly in New York, someone's like, yo, I saw you on Cast Castle. I was like, how is that the case? It just seems very weird. I'd be willing to bet behind the scenes, whether whether it's true or not is irrelevant. Behind the scenes, everything you see is fake. I also wonder if the reason Elon Musk was backing out is because there are national security letters. Alex Berenson, a journalist who sued Twitter successfully, got his account reinstated, mentioned potential government involvement in censorship. So maybe there is something deeper and darker going on here, and Elon is forcing it out into the light, like that scene in Constantine where Keanu Reeves brings his arms together and forces Gabriel into... You get the point. Maybe it's all one big trick. Or maybe, maybe Elon Musk is actually getting a better price. I mean, think about it. He negotiates initially, gets this deal locked in, backs out, and forces them to spend money to sue him. That's where it gets gold. Twitter's looking at this deal being like, how much are we going to lose by suing Elon? How long is it going to take? It's a game of chicken now. Lawsuits typically end in settlements. And Elon might say, okay, Twitter, I'll buy you for 35 million, down from 44. Save himself $9 billion. Maybe he even goes down to 30. Maybe he says, if you want me to buy... And you don't want to go to court. I don't think it will cost Twitter $10 billion to sue Elon Musk. So they have a strong incentive to go after him with a law firm where it might cost them tens of millions of dollars because the return is pretty good. But then you also have to take into consideration that Elon Musk has protections too. I saw a bunch of people posting about this saying that Elon was screwed. Now he's got to pay Twitter a billion dollars. And I said, no, he doesn't. Elon is alleging that Twitter breached their agreement by not giving information on bots. Elon is arguing they are in breach. They would have to pay him the billion dollars, or at least he could argue that. We'll see. Now, a lot of people wondering whether or not it's a cope or a game. We got no nothing. Shout out. He says Reddit is getting worse at making memes and it's making Elon Musk nervous. Why do they think this? Why do they think that Elon Musk would be nervous about this? Let me tell you, this is the richest guy on the planet. 
He did not become the richest guy on the planet by being a moron. I'll also tell you this. I was looking at electric cars and I was wondering why anybody would want to buy the Model S Plaid. It's so expensive. And then I looked at like the e-tron and the Mercedes EQ something or other. And I was like, wow, Tesla is better. Crazy. No, like, like twice the horsepower. Elon knows something. Elon's got something going on. Now, some have argued he's screwing us over. That's right. I own like 20 shares in Twitter. That it's all one dumb game. He's manipulating Twitter to make a quick buck. He bought 9%. No, I don't believe that. I don't believe it for a second. Think about it. Elon Musk owns 9%. If I were to make a gamble, I would say Elon's playing 4D chess the whole way through. And I'll tell you why. Elon has long talked about a recession. Other people have pointed this out. Elon was predicting a recession was coming years ago. Then this year, he buys a 9% stake in Twitter. If Elon thought a recession was coming, why would he put 9% uh, stake in Twitter knowing it was going to collapse in value? Unless this is all part of his 4D chess. Think about it. Elon Musk buys 9%. He then makes a move to buy the company. They might accuse him of screwing over the investors, but he will say, I'm also a shareholder. I would be impacted all the same way. Interesting. If Elon did not own a portion of the company and then did everything he did, I'm sure a lot of shareholders would be like, you're screwing over the company, you're costing me money. And he'd be like, well, you know, what do I say to that? It's still technically true. I mean, they, they could still sue him for this. I think he is being sued. I think, I think actually, I think, uh, I, yeah, someone from Twitter, a Twitter shareholder, but he's going to argue I did not do anything to screw over anybody. I also have shares in the company. Him buying it on 520 is also suspect. It is, in, it is indicative of either a madman who has no idea what he's doing or someone who's planned this long in advance. And again, I really doubt the guy who said a recession is coming two years ago dumped his money into a company just to lose it. If he knew a recession was coming, and, it, and it's here, then certainly he understands the next layer of putting his money into Twitter. I think it's all part of the game. I think, I'll, I'll put it this way. I don't want to be overzealous. I lean towards Elon Musk knows what he's doing. I remain skeptical. I think there's a strong possibility this is a cope. Elon Musk said he was going to buy Twitter. He got some information he can't reveal, and he went, whoa, this company is trash. But he agreed to the purchase price. Maybe. Maybe not. I'd imagine they'd have, show, they'd have shown him stuff. And, and maybe it's, it really is as simple as it is on the surface that Elon went to buy the company. He said, now give me the info on bots. They said, no. He went, yo, then I'm out. And they said, we're suing you. It could just be one thing leads to another. Here's a really creepy picture of, uh, of Elon, I guess. Prane Pathol says, so this was all part of your plan. I don't know. The left, for some reason, gives them the, are, are going negative, and the right is going positive. Vosh says, this is incredibly embarrassing. One person said, why didn't you do your due diligence about bot issue before making the deal? Elon, genuine question. <clears throat> I'm not going to post that one, sensitive image. So I do find it interesting. The willingness of people who support Elon and are hoping that he saves the platform are typically going the 4D chess route. I think that's stupid. I think Elon is fallible. I think he may have made a big mistake. However, I don't understand why Elon would do the things that he did. You don't bumble your way into being the richest man on the planet. The bigger question, I suppose, is what does this mean for censorship? Dave Rubin was recently suspended. Jordan Peterson was recently, recently suspended. And a lot of people were hoping that Elon Musk would be the one to come in and solve the problem. Some people said that Dave and Jordan should remain banned until Elon comes in and releases them. Dave deleted his tweet, which was a screenshot of Jordan Peterson's tweet. Jordan Peterson is refusing, saying he'd rather die. I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. Will Chamberlain, with the spicy take, said, Elon Musk will buy this platform whether he wants it or not. You don't just back out of a multi-billion dollar contract. So here's what I think. I think Elon is going to get a discount on Twitter and he's going to own it. There is a threshold by which Twitter says it's not worth it to keep going to war with Elon. Elon is going to have to buy the platform. And here's the other thing. What happens if Elon says, sorry, don't have the money? Elon went to financiers. And then about, about a month ago, I think it was, the conversations stopped. He stopped trying to get the money. 
Twitter can come to him and say, you have to buy it. And he'll go, I can't. Think about the position he's put Twitter in. Twitter now wants him to buy it, but he might not be able to. So he'll get it at a premium rate. Ultimately, what does this mean for us? Donald Trump came out and said that Elon Musk is a scam artist, and that he wasn't going to buy Twitter. And that may be the case. Meanwhile, the left calls Donald Trump the scam artist, but Donald Trump did launch Truth Social and Truth Social actually has some pretty good engagement. So let's 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 let me say this, wrapping up on the Elon subject before we get into the censorship stuff and the bot stuff. Whatever, man, I don't care about Twitter. Elon could save it or not. Most of you probably don't care either. But let me talk to you about bots. I think Elon's right. Donald Trump's Twitter account had what? Was it like 100 million or something? I don't know how many millions of followers Trump had, but he had lot, tens of millions of, at the very bare minimum. On Truth Social, Donald Trump has 3.4 million followers. You see, he controls the flow there. Shouldn't he have more followers? 3.4? That's not a whole lot. Certainly his hardcore supporters would follow him, and they did. Where's everybody else? You mean to tell me that they just decided they didn't care about following the president, even though they could? Take a look at Trump's engagement, the responses and retruths, they call it. Substantially high, higher than Twitter, relative to the amount of followers. That alone, I think, exposes it's all a big lie. Back in the day, 10 years ago, digital media companies were doing this thing called ad, what do they call it? It was like uh, ad rights sales. Here's how it works. A company will have a premium brand. Hey, TimCast.com is a premium brand. Go to TimCast.com and become a member to support our cultural endeavors. We got Tales from the Inverted World. Man, that show is just getting better and better. I'm super excited for it. Uh, It's a premium brand. Uh, We don't get that much traffic relative to these click farms, though, because we're about premium. Our traffic is, we actually would prefer it to be lower, but members. So we're nowhere near as big as the Daily Wire. But ideally, what we have is, you know, uh, instead of getting 100,000 views on an episode, I'd rather get 20,000, but each of those 20,000 pays 10 bucks a month to watch the, that content premium. There are a lot of websites that have no premium content. They would do, they, you, know, you ever see those articles where it's like, you know, 25 celebrity botched plastic surgery. And when you click it, it shows you one image and says click next. That turns one, one story into 25 clicks. They then sell the rights to those clicks to a premium brand. So let's say you have a premium brand. Uh, we'll call it uh, The Voice. How about that? Voice. What was called Voice. And they get 10 million views per month. 10 million, not that much. V- a voice is uh, popular and an ad could sell with like a $40 CPM. But 10 million views, not really enough. So what they do is they go to these click farms and say, we want to buy the rights to your traffic. They then put the, those numbers in their voice network. They then tell advertisers the voice network reaches 40 million people. And as a premium brand, you know people care about the products we promote. These people think that a voice viewer is watching all of their videos, uh, seeing their ads, when in reality, only one in four turns out to be from voice. The rest is some garbage click farm. It was a big scandal. That's what they were doing. And the problem there is you didn't know if the click farms were bots, and they probably were. I think the dead internet theory is partially true. I think the overwhelming majority of followers and views and traffic across the board is probably fake. And Truth Social is exposing that. And Elon Musk may be about to expose it as well. Dead internet theory is some fascinating stuff. Really. Really. Take a look into it if you haven't already. The idea that the internet is just, it's run run by bots to manipulate the public and make money and things like that, corporate and political entities. So we'll see what Elon truly uh, is going for and if he does accomplish anything. But I will will end by saying this. Over at TimCast.com, we're going to be covering a lot of these stories like the dead internet theory. Not only do we have Tales from the Inverted World, Shane Cashman's deep investigation so far into the lost Confederate gold. Dude, these episodes are 40 minutes long, up to an hour long. I can't believe the team, the hard work the team is putting into making this show. And in order to sustain it as good as it is, we need members. So we're going to be moving Tales from the Inverted World as a TimCast exclusive for the next episodes. I think there might be 10 more episodes or 11 more episodes. And they're 40 minutes to an hour long. 
We're working on our, our mobile app, our TV apps. So we're gonna, we want to be a streaming service. We want to rival Netflix and Disney Plus, and we're going to do it. We are doing it. Tales of the Inverted World is truly incredible. But I will add, we're also launching another show to go alongside it. This new show, we're building a studio in a haunted house. Legit. I really mean it. Haunted house is a bit of a nebulous term. It's an old house from the 1800s that looks rather decrepit. And we're going to be putting a studio in it and leaving it rather decrepit. And uh, it's really cool, actually. And then we're going to have by candlelight. Hopefully we can do it by candlelight. Maybe we'll do like faux candlelight. Shane having conversations about these conspiracy theories, you know, and it'll be everything. It'll be flat earth sometimes, but I really want to focus on like the unexplained, the paranormal, things like dead internet theory, creepy things, simulation theory. That's going to be a weekly show exclusive on TimCast.com. I'm really excited for the stuff we're launching because I'm a huge fan of that stuff. We've got music projects and everything. Anyway, go to TimCast.com if you want to support us. As for Elon Musk, I guess we'll just have to wait and see if anything does come out of this. Good luck with that lawsuit, brother. I think Elon's going to win in the end. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at YouTube.com slash TimCast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.